G'day guys, Ziggy D here. Last week I attended my first ever Magic League for Amonkhet. This is a fun, casual, friendly event run by most local game stores that sees you build a 30 card deck beginning with just 3 booster packs and adding 1 booster pack to flesh out your deck each week that you return. The idea is that you build a pretty janky deck to begin with, play with it, evolve it over time, play with it some more, and then continue to evolve it until you hopefully have something pretty cool running. It's a pretty interesting format because you're going to have some tough matches against people and maybe lose or tie and then have a chance to match up against them for a friendly grudge match in the following weeks. I've grown to love the limited format in Magic the Gathering since I first started playing about a year ago. The way it tests things like card evaluation, creativity and deck building as well as your actual gameplay skills is a lot of fun. And the majority of most of my memorable Magic experiences have been in either drafts or sealed events, like the current Amonkhet League. So I began my Amonkhet League experiences in week 2. Unfortunately I missed the first week, but you can join any time and you get caught up in terms of booster packs. So I cracked my first 4 starting packs for some pretty nice pulls. The highlights were Gideon of the Trials, a pretty beastly white planeswalker, and Liliana's Mastery which is both a zombie tribal payoff card and something that works reasonably well on its own. So I didn't have anything too enticing in the other colours and I really wanted to run both of these spicy rares, so I decided to try and see if I could work black-white zombies, which is actually what I played in pre-release, but that's okay. That's probably one of my favourite things, black-white zombies from Almoncat, so that's cool. Now as we're building 30 card decks, we're looking to run around 12 to 13 lands and 17 to 18 spells, with hopefully something like 12 to 14 creatures. And I say hopefully because uh, you'll see. Having a look at all my colours and being pretty settled on white and black at this point, I began by pulling out all my black and white cards and seeing what I could do in terms of zombie tribal support. Unfortunately, I only had 8 creatures in black and white, these guys just here. Though at least a few of these guys are zombies or zombie producing creatures like the Doom Descenders here. So I had two choices at this point, go for alternate colours with more creatures and ditch my juicy rares, no, or uh, try and make it work by getting a little bit creative. As most of my creatures were in white, going for something like white red could be a good option, ultimately however. The deciding factor was that my other colours didn't fare actually much better than white and black, and I had some really nice non-creature spells in black and white that I thought I could make it work. Now when it comes to sealed with so few starting packs, most people are going to be having similar deck building constraints, and the key was going to be how good a deck I could build around this struggle. Looking at my black and white, I noted some pretty nice cards that was going to keep this deck alive. First up we had Inno Ketra's Name and Liliana's Mastery, two solid zombie payoff cards that I could build around. Inno Ketra's Name, nice finishing punch, and Liliana's Mastery just giving you that juicy, juicy board of zombies. Two pretty key little looking dudes are Binding Mummy and Fan Bearer. These guys can both slow my opponent's attacks and also potentially open up the board for me to get some of my own attacks through as well. I have to say from the actual games I played, Fan Bearer in particular was quite a star. Now obviously both of these guys are zombies as well, so they synergize nicely with my zombie payoff cards. Not to mention Binding Mummy being a payoff card himself. The Doom Dissenters aren't amazing as just like 1-1s one for 2, but I could use them to kind of like slow things down and buy time by chump blocking with them, and then they come back stronger as 2-2 two -two zombies and hopefully at a time where I have some of my uh, zombie payoff cards ready to go. And you know, with the amount of creatures that I have, you know, getting, getting the extra return on those tutus coming back is uh, quite, quite helpful. Tarkrop Elite is a bit of a star as well. This one can exert to give all of my creatures 1-1 one, one until end of turn. Because I have a lot of those like zombie tokens and things like that, I can get a surprisingly wide board with only, uh, you know, not very many creatures in my actual deck. So this makes for a nice like finishing punch. And finally, I actually had two Cartouche of Ambitions, which is... One of the stronger cartouches, and is just such a swingy card. Like, actually, spoilers, having played from this with a knight, this thing makes such a big difference, both when I was playing against it and when I was playing with it. It's good when you're behind, when you're losing a game, because you put it down, you get to potentially minus one, minus one, one of their big creatures, or kill a smaller creature, and then you get a big, juicy creature, like you chuck it on your 2-4 or something like that, and it becomes a 3-5 with lifelink, 
which then just starts to eat attackers or eat blockers, uh, or just starts to build your life total back up. So it's great when you're behind, and then it's also pretty solid when you're ahead as well, allowing you to widen that gap a bit. So very, very nice uh, card, and I was pretty happy to have gotten two of those. If I'm not going to have many creatures, at least I have some nice cartouches. So at this point I had a pretty solid skeleton to my deck, but I still only had eight creatures in black and white. A real problem, that's not enough. Also I had no really solid removal either, mostly just the cartouches for the minus one minus one counters and combat tricks to win actual fights, but no real removal. If any opponent I come up against has a nice curve of basic creatures, I was going to have a really tough time dealing with that. So my solution at the time was that I needed to splash another colour. Now, Blue had two Embalm creatures, which can become zombies, by the way, so nice kind of synergy there. Firstly, Tarkrop Skirmisher, which is a pretty bad card, right? <laughs> and Avon Wind Guide, which is a really good card on the flip side. So I added both of these guys out of desperation and added two blue mana to my pool of five white, four black, and a Cradle of the Accursed. With no mana fixing, I knew this was going to be a little bit tough. Now in my actual games, I found out that Avonwind Guide worked out really well, and it was a bit of a powerhouse with all of my zombie tokens. And I never really actually had any problems playing my other cards, as they were all single mana symbols apart from Gideon and Liliana's Mastery. Gideon always came out on time, though I did have one game where Liliana's Mastery was delayed a few turns due to missing a black mana. Tarkrop Skirmisher, on the other hand, though, felt terrible. <laughs> it was a dead card in hand most of the time, and when it did come out, it was not impactful as only a 2-1 with an expensive embalm cost, so not very helpful. Now, reviewing my decision to splash now, I have a few thoughts and lessons that I've learned from this. For cards that I'm splashing, they need to A, be impactful, and have a relatively high converted mana cost with only one symbol in the splash colour, so like the one blue in Avonwind. Now, Avon Wind Guide fits the bill here, as I'm likely to have a blue mana when I need to play it, and it has a huge impact on the game when actually played. Now, the second lesson that I learned from this, and thing that I thought about on review, was that in Armon Ket, there may be other options to consider besides an awkward third colour splash. Cycling. Cycling is basically the my deck has problems mechanic. <laughs> Cycling allows you to pay a mana cost to discard a card and then draw another. This has a few effects. You can cycle to get land you're missing, so preventing, you know, land starvation. And you can cycle to get rid of a not useful card in search of something better. Or in my case, you can cycle to thin a deck down to the few creatures that I do actually have. So basically, when you're running a 30 card deck, right, you have to run 30 cards. And if you only have not enough creatures in there, you want to try and get to those creatures as quickly as possible. Sometimes paying a bit of mana to do that, like one black or two colorless, to try and get to those creatures is going to be really helpful. And then in effect, you're running a less mana efficient 28 card deck if you're running both of these, for example. So these lessons in mind, for next event, I have a few options to improve my deck before I even crack my next pack. Adding in colorless mana cyclers or other on-color cyclers like Scarab Feast, now, this is a most likely useless card in most games, but at one black mana to cycle, it's going to help me get to my better cards faster. And then a combo of the two lessons that I learned. Shimmer Scale Drake, this one's kind of interesting. It's a higher mana cost card with one blue, and impactful as a 3-4 flyer. So it kind of fits my rules that I learned for splashing in a third colour like this. Now this will sometimes be playable, right? I might draw this late game, at which point getting the 3-4 flyer is going to be nice, and I'll probably have that blue mana out. On the other hand, if I get it and it's not useful, I can cycle it and get towards the things that are useful. I could even look for options in other colours I'm not running for 1 and 2 colourless cost cycling cards just to thin my deck. Though it turns out when looking through what I had, I don't actually have any of those, but it was a good thought. <laughs> so here's a picture of my full deck as I built it in my first week. If you guys have any thoughts or advice, let me know. From my next booster, I'm really hoping to pull just a few more creatures in white or black. Now, preferably zombies, then I think this deck will really come together. However, I know it's going to be important to remain flexible. As such, if I pull some really nice red cards, for example, there's nothing to stop me from swapping to red-white, and that could be an option. At the very least, I'll cut Tarkrop Skirmisher and add in either a Scarab Feast to thin or a Shimmer Scale Drake to pad creatures out a little bit. I think I can pull some nice wins out with a few improvements to this deck. My first week was two ties and one losses, that was a close loss as well. <laughs> I'm especially looking forward to rematches against the players I played against last week to see how our decks have evolved. 
Anyway guys, I have a foil Amun Ket full art land giveaway for you guys, some of these juicy dudes. Just share some sealed advice or a story of learnings from your sealed experiences in the comments for us to learn from, and I'll select a winner in a week or so. That's it for now, I'm Ziggy D, and thank you guys very much for watching.